Well, in a conference call with reporters this week, Florida Democratic Party Chair Nikki Fried said she wants ousted Hillsborough State Attorney Andrew Warren to be reinstated and then jump into the race for that office again. Democrats want a federal judge to return Warren to the office he was elected to. The 11th Circuit Court of Appeals ruled this month that Warren was unjustly removed from office for voicing his opinions on public policy. We look forward to getting back to the district court to get the relief that has been denied for 18 months to me, to the voters in Hillsborough County, and to everyone who believes that no one is above the law not even the governor. The appeals court said a federal judge in Tallahassee has the power to reinstate Warren. Governor DeSantis removed Warren from his elected position and is now asking all members of the appeals court in Atlanta to hear the case. And Tar, does, does Andrew Warren have any power to compel the judge to, to make a decision in his favor or to? You know, Nikki Fried might have been stirring the political pot with this, right? Mm -hmm. And it's important to note, though, even if she was doing that, um, that if the governor does not reinstate Andrew Warren, it'll be twice that he's denied the voters of Hillsborough County the right of the representation through their vote. But what's really interesting is this is doing nothing but advancing Andrew Warren. He looks like a champion of democracy, an ally of civil liberties, and whether he runs for his old seat or any other seat in the state, he's in a great position. Mm. What do you think about this? dispute. I mean, Again, I do not see it as free speech. If Andrew Warren wanted to talk politics, which he has since he was elected, you go outside of the building. That was the law when I was in the legislature. It's still the law today that if you want to accept contributions, talk politics, you do it outside on your own time. But the rule what of law says did, that he should be reinstated, what so it doesn't matter. Did, what he did was put it on stationery from the state attorney's office that, and from day one, when he was elected the first time, he put it on stationery that he was not going to enforce certain laws that made us less safe. Again, with this issue, he put it on stationery. He was warned by his own advisors in the office not to do that, to take his political um, ideology outside, not inside. So again, he was telling his people not to prosecute certain what? new laws. What I have more against him than anything else, so again, free speech, we cannot go to our employers and speak. But um, Deborah, the, the appellate court the, has already decided, already decided against it. him. Well, it, it's still and got it's a ways a to go. it's a conservative court. It has a ways to go, and he has not been reinstated. And he's been, to me, breaking the law since day one of taking the office. And I've seen those letters he sent out with those crimes, which... But that you know, was not part of the finding of the court. Well, it, it's not, but I'm saying he has politicized that office from day one. Let's bring Hunter in. Hunter, uh, what do you say? I was going to say, this, it's more of the broader issue of if we went to any other employer, if, we may, if I went into my employer and I said, uh, you know, here's your policy, this is, this is what you want us to do, this is what you're supposed to be doing, which is the law, which is what he's supposed to be following, supposed to be prosecuting. Uh, if I send out a company email saying, I'm not gonna follow these policies yeah. when I go to work, um, if I'm not fired the next day, or in the office talking about suspensions or, or, or something, um, I, I would be surprised. I think most people would be surprised. And that's essentially what he did here. He yeah. went and pledged, signed a pledge saying he wasn't gonna prosecute certain laws. You know, you have to start looking at it and going, any other employer would have done the exact same thing. You can't have somebody in there who's going to overtly disobey the fact that they're supposed to be doing a certain duty and a certain job. Howard, job is that task. the way you see it? That that uh, that he agreed, he disagreed with the law, and he should be fired. Uh, <laughs> prosecutors, state attorneys, are constitutional officers that are charged with exercising their discretion as to what make uh, what to prosecute as a high priority crime and a low priority crime. He's charged with exercising his discretion. But Rob, I wanna say there's somebody that's left out of this discussion. This isn't just a fight between Governor DeSantis and Andrew Warren. Mm -hmm. We're leaving out the voters. Uh, if, if there was ever a case of voter suppression, boy, this was it. The voters have voted twice for the person that they want to be the chief law enforcement officer of their county. The governor doesn't like 
uh, Andrew Warren's policies, of his prioritization of what to prosecute. And, but that choice of that policy disagreement should be left to the voters. That's what democracy is all about. That's what elections are for. If the governor doesn't like Andrew Warren's policies as a prosecutor, he should campaign against him when he runs for re-election, well, well, then, not remove him like some authoritarian dictator. Well, let's look, Agreed. if we want to talk about voters then, then the voters have also put in their backing behind representatives who've changed state law to, to put in legal procedures and make, in, make sure that prosecutors go and follow the law. They're supposed to go and prosecute the crimes and laws that we or we as, as voters vote in those representatives to go and make. So if you're going to go in there and say, well, let's talk about voters, well, mm -hmm. you're ignoring all the voters who went ahead and said, we disagree with the fact that you're going in and clearly putting your personal bias forward and ignoring the fact that you're supposed to prosecute these well, crimes. He was elected, he was elected in, a, in, a, in a district, though, that had an incumbent. So I think the voters were in Fine. full support yeah, of Andrew Warren. The rest of the, you're ignoring the, the whole state law. You know, well, okay, final statement. He did not campaign on the basis of, had he told the voters, I'm going to get in office in day one, I'm going to send a memo not to prosecute certain laws and then continue to do that That's where the sheriffs in the state yeah, of exactly Florida found he You're made us less his history too safe. Right now. All right, let, let's bring Howard Troxler. I, I, I go <laughs> Howard Simon in for the last word. Howard? You know, the argument that uh, the governor makes that uh, he was neglectful of his duty would be a, which has been made here again, would be a credible argument if there was ever a case in front of him that should have been prosecuted, that wasn't prosecuted. He never even had a case. The governor did this as a political gesture to enhance his uh, bona fides as a anti-woke governor. But uh, there was never uh, there was never a case that was brought to Andrew Warren where he had to make a decision where it could even be argued that he neglected his duty.